because I have both a deer tag and an elk tag in the same unit. They are split by one night. That fog line is now almost covering the elk. That worked out perfect. So that's it from Idaho. We came, we conquered, we worked our butts off. I don't know how many calories and miles we put on the boots over just the last five or six days, but it was tough. But that's the most rewarding hunts, like I said. Making the team lodge. Somebody, hopefully by now, has won this trailer. This is our current giveaway. It's the ultimate base camp giveaway with Hush and Team Lodge, Yeti, and Camp Chef. So I'm going on a deer hunt in Idaho it's, and then an elk hunt. So it's kind of a back-to-back -back hunt because the season dates are separated by a night, basically. So we're loading up. I got some gear. Raiden's got some gear to load, but take a quick look. up on the side of us on the freeway with his phone he's all excited you can tell and his phone says can I meet you <laughs> so we're pulling over in the middle of I don't know where Idaho and we're gonna meet this young man I'm guessing he is a, a hush fan and watches our YouTube videos so we're gonna take some time out of our day and uh, meet him yeah, get sketchy place right here trying to kill us what's up man sure, Eric, nice to meet you yeah. oh Braden, nice yeah. to meet you. What do you guys say? We're headed to camp, dude. I'm here and out. This is like the weirdest thing I'm like shaking. Like I'm like watching the vlog right now. But I'm not. Yeah, you're going to be in the vlog. This is insane. Tell me that's not insane. This guy almost killed us on the freeway <laughs> just to pull over. To FaceTime you. It's not big. It's not big. It's not big. Welcome to camp everybody welcome back to new film um, this one has the potential to be pretty cool something I've never done before I'm hunting in Idaho we're inside the team lodge trailer which by now the time of this release most likely we have given this thing away to a lucky grand prize winner just by shopping on our website but the cool thing about this trip is I have both a deer tag and an elk tag in the same unit they are split by one night. So the deer hunt runs through the end of the month and November 1st starts a nail hunt. So this is going to be pretty fun because the three days that we have to hunt mule deer are also going to be, you know, scouting time and getting to get familiar with the terrain, the country, and hopefully locate some elk so we know where to be opening day of the first. So for those who are following along with five for five, I am one out of two so far. I ate my tag in New Mexico because I found a big bull. I held tight and I hunted him the entire five day hunt and I didn't punch a tag. So uh, five for five, we're going for four for five. And this is hunt number three. This hunt I thought could potentially be one of the tougher ones. Like I just figured it would be tough because if the elk weren't here due to migration and weather, then I, I didn't know where else to look for them. Um, I've only hunted this unit a couple times for mule deer, so I'm hoping that where we're hunting deer, there's elk that have moved in post rut. Some of the bulls have pulled off the cows, so we got a chance for bulls with cows, usually the smaller ones this time of the year, but typically the bigger bulls, which I'm after, are going to be pulled off and secluded and maybe running solo or with one or two other older age class bulls. So it's a rifle hunt for both mule deer. It's a rifle hunt for the elk as well. Um, we have a comfortable base camp. This team lodge is awesome. Uh, whoever gets to take this thing home is so lucky. It's a pretty sweet little unit. We've got my bed over here full of all my gear. We've got Braden's bed right here. A plethora of food and snacks. We're eating like children up here if you saw our spread over there. So yeah, welcome to a new hunt guys. This is back to back. We're trying to hunt mule deer and elk in the same trip. I've never done it before. We're gonna work our butt off. We're gonna sleep on the mountain some of these nights. We're gonna stay at base camp some of the other nights. So let's do it. It's gonna be a fun one. Good morning. It's like 5 a.m. 
and uh, we got the backpacks ready. We ate a Krispy Kreme donut. So we're carb loaded. We're gonna hop in the truck for about a 20 minute drive and uh, start at this little, well, it's at the bottom of this big canyon. He, that's a thing here, everybody starts at the bottom. And I don't mind that because it kinda filters out the guys who aren't gonna do the work. So we're gonna start at the bottom, carry on up this big spine Hunting this ridge line all the way up, both right and left, glassable, good looking country. And then eventually get to this little, I call it the nipple, it's where I camped, I think three years ago. Shot a buck there the last day. I'm going to post up there and then we're going to get out the vortex, binoculars, spotting scope, and just scan the sector. Okay guys, 530, heading up to trailhead. It's a steep hike. And we got to go through a creek bottom and then through some pine trees. And once we get about halfway elevation to our destination, you can start to see. And honestly, I think we're playing the time perfect. I think it should be light around 7 or so. So we can hunt and glass our way up. And then eventually get to the destination and really sit down and glass. So a little bit of snow here. I know this place has got some weather. I know it's cold. What I like about these last few days of October is is typically the bucks tend to start getting curious and chasing does so it's kind of a migration area that means if we see a buck we have to kill it because you might not see it tomorrow so let's go see what we find guys check this out they're a little bit melted out but those are some bull elk tracks. I was just telling Braden, every time I come up here I typically see some elk right at the head of this straw. And sure enough, I can see three elk right now and they look like bulls. They look like small bulls, but we're gonna sneak around on the back side of this ridge and uh, pop over and check them out get some video of them but this is typically where i see the elk so that's good to know that they're in here Beans are huge. Oh my gosh. I'm just getting all the videos of you. Brayden just spotted a buck on the ridge. Not too bad. You said he's three by four? Yeah. Man, we are on a roll, guys, for does. Braden and I have been up here since first light and all the elk, which was super fun. Just picking apart every little cut, every snowy face. And we've seen all kinds of does. Um, Braden has spotted two bucks. They're both little basket three points. Um, one's quite a ways away. But yeah, get excited because I'll be glassing some of this really rocky, rough rock ledges and boulders, and all of a sudden I'll see a deer with the binos, and I'll be like, oh, that's buck country. 
And it's always, so far, it's always a doe. But it's crazy because it's probably about 48 degrees. The deer are up feeding. Next thing you know, they're bedded. Next thing you know, those same deer are up. So it's been pretty active throughout the morning to glass because deer are moving and we're able to see quite a few bedded. I bedded some in the snow, glass them up. Um, so they're out here guys. We're just looking for a nice buck. This this one is close To kind of what my expectations were in this area But if we can get one that's maybe another year older the big white face I don't care what it has for antlers, but just like a nice mature buck big white face. I think that'd get me excited so We're just gonna keep picking it apart and taking naps and uh, eating snacks So it's, it's a nice day and it's been a fun day between the deer and all the elk. So that's exciting. We're trying not to put any pressure on these elk. So I'm gonna keep picking it apart. All right, guys, it's 4.30 p.m. And uh, we've been perched on this knob for most of the day. But we think it's time to get somewhere that is a little closer to where potentially we can get on a buck tonight. This is a great place to glass, but you're kind of far away. And reason number two, we have a herd of about a dozen elk that are starting to pop out in those pines right where we saw them this morning. So we don't want to mess with them. So we're just going to kind of dip off this backside again and try to let them do their thing. Because if they can just stay put for two days, we could potentially shoot that, that six-point um, bull. So... It's been a fun day, very active, glassing deer nonstop. Um, Braden's killing it, finding bucks bedded. He's found every buck so far. But we're just gonna drop to a lower knob and kind of go from there. But yeah, these elk, it's kind of cool that they're here, but it's, they're, it's kind of a pain in the butt because we can't, we could, you know, push through them or blow them out to hunt deer. But I think we'd rather just let them be and try to hunt deer in this canyon. So let's go see what we He just went over. He did. Yeah. Did they run? No. They're just slow walking. Oh, well, he's right there. He's coming. He's gonna be right where that doe was right now. down the hill and uh, spotted a doe in the saddle right here. Sure enough, right behind her was a buck. I'm guessing it might be a three-point with glass from the top. It was kind of like, you know what, this is fun. Like, this is like an old school general season, like hunting through the trees. And I got excited and was like, I don't care what it is. So I took a shot. Um, I'm standing right here. We're gonna go check that out. But I just decided to come here to see if I can't see the doe or him come up out of this bottom, just to make sure. He hopped, but I don't know if that was from the shot or the sound. So playing it safe. But before it's dark, we're gonna wrap around right here, probably right now. Go check for blood. Well, it's a dang good thing we've got these devices. We plug the SD card into the phone, transferred it to the phone, watch it in slow motion. I shot right over his back. So, happy that it's a clean miss. Not too tore up that it's a miss at all. Um, would have been absolutely thrilled because the moment was fun. 
wanted to get a buck. And it just felt like I was back in time, you know. We've been so strategic on a lot of these hunts where you glass, you use optics a lot, you make a move. That was just like cruising through the trees and kind of still hunting, going slow, coming down the trail, glassing, and bam, there's a buck. So fun experience. So glad that we can see, and we couldn't find blood or anything back there. And I was like, my initial gut feeling was it wasn't a hit because I didn't hear a thud. But the camera confirmed it, so good news is we get to keep hunting. <laughs> Bad news is we don't get to sleep in tomorrow. But that's all right. Go back to camp, get some brats, and eat. Hey, hey, campfire. Been a minute since I had a campfire to hang out in at hunting camp. Um, well, I guess it hasn't been that long. New Mexico, we did have one. So welcome back to camp. We got some news for you. We got brats on the stove. Actually, let's go show you in the trailer. Uh, these Team Lodge trailers are sweet. Like I said, we gave this one away to some lucky winner. Cooking a little hot here, but we got brats and burritos. Whoa, <laughs> dude, so hot. Cooking a little hot here. here. Yeah, I got something to show you guys. Come with me. Boom. Flatter than flat. When we rolled in, the night we parked this thing, Braden was sitting right here. He's like, dude, I could hear a leak in your tire. I looked at the tire, it was like, perfect. I'm like, I don't hear it. Well, we definitely heard it, and it definitely was a leak because now it's flat. So we have that to look forward to tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to get up early. We're going to do a little recon mission to scout some new country. Always keeping an eye out for, like, more elk. Uh, plan B elk, bigger elk, whatever, and deer. So, but we need to be close to camp because we need to come back and take care of some stuff. So, that's our plan tomorrow. We're gonna grub and eat and go to bed, guys. We'll see you in the morning. Today we decided to take a big picture at inventory here. So we're looking for elk, big bulls. And as you can see, we're still a long ways away from anything. So if we see anything we want to hunt, if it's a deer, we're going to have to try to bed it and move on it tonight. If it's an elk, we'll just sit back and let them rest for a couple days. But this is the big picture. This is what we're doing today. We're trying to leave those elk alone. And a uh, cool story. Cool story, bro. We ran into another hunter and either his girlfriend or wife. Forgive me. I don't know. Um, they asked us where we were going and we were going this way and they were wanting to go the other way, which is totally fine. And they asked if we had elk tag. They said, yeah, we, we had seen some elk up that draw. And, uh, that's actually why we're not going up there today to let them settle. And very respectful, which, I mean, it's public land. You guys know the rules, you know, get after it. If you have a game plan, I'm not here to put claim on anything and hopefully nobody else is either. But he respectfully said, Hey, we're going to go check out some other elk. We know there's elk there. We'll leave you guys alone. We're gonna go check another spot. So, thanks, K Quinn 511. Uh, appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll be in touch. We swapped uh, Garmin inReach emails. All right, guys, it's 3:30 p.m. We should probably be out there somewhere, but we're not. So, we're just trying to see what it looks like right here above camp, because from what I can tell, I don't think many people would go be going there because there's a river which we got waders, um, so we can cross the river. We never really planned to unless we saw something big, but we got waders and boots. We can sneak across this creek, well, river, whatever. It's pretty wide, but it's pretty shallow, and get up into some of this country that I know is getting a lot less pressure, and maybe it'll hold a big buck. So I think that's what we're going to do, just try something different. Again, letting the elk where we're at just kind of relax, do their thing in hopes that there's one more day of deer hunt and hopes that they stick around for the elk hunt. Okay, we're crossing. Our destination is this finger ridge up past those rocks and use the backbone to kind of cruise, but I think if we just cut at an angle, this will be fine.
और या two point like that and then do the spike and then I don't even think the other one it might be just a fawn or something. We are just making our way up the spine trying to get some elevation and glass some deer on the way up. My brain's like dude white face. I got excited but it sounds like they're just small bucks. That's what we need to do is just pick it apart you know identify and glass every deer we can eventually there'll be something with this and there's his neck almost right in front of him. You hit him at that time. Huh? I think you hit him. Yeah, that sounded like a hit. Oh, he's going down. Shoot him again. Yeah, dude, he's rolling. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Tagged out in Idaho. <laughs> Sweet little four by two. I don't know. He had a nice four and a little two on the right, but missed embedded and he stood and just ran up left and thumped him on that one. He tried to run, but then he tumbled and he's just dead on this dead log right there. <laughs> Got a buck. <laughs> that was fun, man. This is everything I wanted. Just Huffing and puffing up these steep canyons, find a decent buck. I, I wasn't going to hold out for a giant or anything. And that's a great buck, and uh, I'm glad I got one. My dad didn't get one on muzzleloader season this year. And he loves to have a deer in the freezer every year. So we got dad a buck. Going to hike over on this big snowy ridge and go take care of him. But yeah, we thumped him on that last one. There he is guys, piled up. Heck, he's even got eye guards, what a bummer. <laughs> huh, so odd to grow as a four by two frame. That's weird. Oh, sweet, man. 
Gorgeous, gorgeous buck. We got a good shot, mid body, quartered up. He was kind of uphill, and that's probably what all the blood is from. Oh man, heck yeah, dude. That's pretty much what I said I'd be happy with. I'm like, if we can just find one in that ballpark of that three point I shot at, or the three point we have bedded on the cliff at a thousand yards, I'm like, they're all the same caliber. And I'd be happy to take one. And we got one. But what's crazy about this buck is he's a beautiful four point and a very typical two point. It's not as if he would, as if he looks like he's gonna sprout and looking down on his frame, I don't know why, could be a busted pedicle, but this antler is definitely different. It has a different look to it. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a little higher on the beam. So for whatever reason, that antler didn't grow, grow right, and it could be his head, which means he probably would have been a goofball his whole life. But great buck. Beautiful country up here. We've been stomping all over and, and hours in the glass and it paid off. We've been finding so many deer bedded. And at the first part of this video, I told you guys, the snow was gonna be in our favor and it was. We would find these bedded deer, mostly does, sometimes small bucks, just bedded in the snow and their dark, dark bodies just stick out like a sore thumb. So, beautiful buck, we're gonna take care of him and uh, notch the tag and put it on him. Last light on the second to last day. Pretty sweet, now we get to hunt out too guys. It's a fun video and there's plenty more, so stick with us. We're just gonna do the dirty work and uh, get him off the mountain. across the river. We'll be eating good. Hey guys, we are grubbing. This is the program. Little olive oil on the bottom of the pan, some pepper jack cheese. Move over to this station. We got the tenderloin cooked, marinated. Um, by the way, we dropped a line of seasonings. So six flavors at gethushin.com. All six of them are really good. Some are more uh, preferred on red meat. Some are fish and fowl. But anyways, back to this. You got the meat rolled up in your crispy tortilla. A little honey mustard if you want the spice and flavor and that's what it is right there and that tenderloin is so soft that you can literally bite right through it as you can see I have been mmm that's good guys this is why we hunt right here anyways back to the elk hunt we'll see you in the morning good morning guys it's the day before the elk hunt starts and we have decided even though it's gonna be a little uncomfortable and a lot of hard work, we're gonna backpack up to kinda somewhat just get in position to hunt these elk. So let me run you through my pack. This is the K4 7200. I always prefer the biggest backpack because you can always cinch them down. So in here so far, I've got my sleeping bag, sleeping pillow, blow up style, sleeping pillow, puffy style. I like to have both. A sleeping pad, my Camp Chef Striker for dehydrated meals, my big old uh, First Light Puffy. This is the, I think it's the Uncompadre. 
Heck, don't quote me. I'm so horrible with names. But that's the biggest puffy they got. I love to use that while I'm glassing. So in addition to this, I got my backpack, my rifle, some ammo, um, food, water, binoculars, little accessories, hand warmers, Garmin in reach, charging batteries. So it's a lot. Um, I'm hoping that we only have to do this for a night or two, but we're going to prepare for two or three days. So we're going to get stuff here at camp. We're going to get over there early so we can try to relocate these elk today, spent to this afternoon and this evening just trying to find the elk. I think it's a good plan, guys. We're trying to just put ourselves in the best position we can to get this done early because I think after these elk feel some pressure, it's going to only get harder and harder as the season goes on. So work hard, hunt easy. Made it to our water source. Before we make the giant push up, we're going to hydrate and fill up our now jeans right here in this little creek. is a safe place for us to camp still a ways away from where the elk are but close enough that we'll be in a good spot opening day at first light even if we wait, roll out of bed at first light so we're gonna kick this out put my tent up we're gonna keep it down today just be quiet and uh, get up on these high peaks where we were a few days ago and find these elk elk I could see one elk in the pine trees all I could see is its waist and its back quarters it's just tapered like a bull and yellow like a bull so yeah he's right there where we want him guys this is good we'll get a little higher and pull out the scope and try to see what he is he just stepped into the trees but we're just gonna play it safe dip off on this side and that thing is literally right where we want Another bull, raghorn, right on the top. It's funny, these elk are so predictable. They're either on the spines or just off them. Two bulls, 10 minutes from camp. It's gonna be a good day tomorrow, man. I'm so excited, guys. We know exactly where we need to be. We're just trying to find the bull that we found a few days ago. That or something bigger. What you got? Got the smaller bull we scouted. Finally picked him out. I don't know how we've been missing him for this long though, but just he's 650 yards away on the hill. So yeah, he's right on his backbone. That means the bigger bull is in there somewhere though, so that's good. Just gonna keep an eye on. I just, guys, we got elk all over us. Pretty exciting to be the day before the hunt and have all these elk. We're still waiting to see the bigger bull. But honestly, if this was opening day, I'd shoot that bull. He's a nice small six. He's got a lot of curve on his main beam. But uh, if he's there, that other bull's somewhere close by. They're, the herd is split. There's some up here and there's some down below us. So, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be fun, guys. A little ox 
oxygen underneath. There you go. Okay. We're not trying to build a big fire. Just enough to cook a hot dog real quick. So we've got some small sticks and some of these. These burn like crazy. So all I'm going to do is light one and cook a hot dog real quick. day elk season November 1st so uh, about halfway through the night the wind started ripping it kind of comes and goes in gusts but there's definitely a pretty uh, pretty good breeze up here so I don't know if the elk are gonna be pulled into the timber or onto the back sides either way I think we're just gonna do the same plan get high glass them hope to find these bulls that we scouted so it's funny you're looking off into the distance you know into some of the mountains behind us you see flashlights and headlights going up it's a uh, it's elk season baby we made it I bet. But it's good to know where he's at. We're still trying to get to the top. We just keep seeing elk, so this is exactly what we thought. Well oh guys, uh, pretty eventful opening day, like we thought. Be some people around and we're kind of being patient on that five by six, hoping he'd come our way. And right when he dipped out of our view, some other hunters popped up on the same hill as him. And there was a spike that kind of stayed out in the wide open. And they either shot the spike or the spike and the five by six, we don't know. And then another group after that, elk started running towards us. There was a spike in it and we were just glassing it. And boom, someone dumped him too. So we've had a pretty good show over here, but we just never could find the big bull I was holding out for.
already got some elk spotted. Same ones as last night. Same spot, so I think we'll pick it apart this morning, but if we can't find a shooter bull, we might have to pull camp at most. Fingers crossed that something. Guys, Braden glassed up the five by six and somehow this thing survived two group of hunters yesterday. And he's just moving his way into some pines, man. It'd be sweet if he bedded right there. Um, but the five by six we scouted is still alive. When these guys shot those two spikes, we're like, dude, we never saw the five by six slide out. He's still moving. All right. I'm like nervous because he's so far away, but he's about to cut to where we won't see him. Once he does that, Braden, maybe we ought to get to the, the top of this because mm -hmm. he might come over that same ridge. That's exciting. We hustled over here, 400 yards from the ridge we thought he might pop over on, and uh, no elk yet, so he might have held up in that other canyon. So we'll sit here for a little while, and if not, we might go, go do a little push, try to bump him out of that canyon and up into the snowy ridge. Dude, you dropped him. <laughs> Hang on. I'm still on him. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Nice spot, dude. dude. Guys, we just cut that clip. Just cut that clip. And Braden looks up. He's like, dude, he's coming out from that tree. And look at this. Look at this fog line real quick. That fog line is now almost covering the elk. That worked out perfect. Oh, I can't even see it so foggy, dang it. But <laughs> we put the hurting on him. I had Braden whistle just to stop him and lift his head up a little bit more. And we dumped him. We dumped him, dude. The freaking five by six. Holy cow, I forgot my air protection. That happened quick. Dude, Braden, nice spot <laughs> this morning. Nice spot on that. Was perfect funny. setup. It was perfect. Dude, this is freaking money. Dude. Guys, we, we worked so hard trying to figure out these elk. And uh, after the rodeo of yesterday, I mean, I don't blame them. The guys... Uh, shooting shot an elk right there where that bull's dead. There's a dead carcass shot an elk on this side 
And we thought the five by six might've got killed from these guys, but he's doing his same exact thing. We patterned him. He was cutting across the same hill. We knew he was gonna make across this cliffy area, which is where we saw the bedded buck the first day. And uh, I just shot him at like 450. <laughs> hurting on him too. So I'm gonna wait for this fog to lift just to confirm he's still there. And then uh, we're gonna go get my bull guys, freaking five by six in Idaho, general season hunt. Let's go. Stoked. Yeah, he hasn't moved. <laughs> guys, we, we stayed up here to let that uh, fog blow out for about five or 10 minutes. Cause I was nervous. We watched the shot and it's that high shoulder. I have always tried to do that to an elk. I tend to just kind of aim in the crease mid body, but I see people who hit that high shoulder and they just stone them. That's what that one did. Um, but we waited for the fog to lift because I've seen a lot of spine shock pulls get hit in the spine, the backbone, and then get up and run. So we didn't want that. We played it safe, waited for the fog to come out. And he's over there dead, so we have a bull, for sure, confirmed. And we're gonna slowly make our way over there safely. Thank goodness Braden brought these sticks. Like, I wasn't gonna bring them this morning because they were frozen solid and I had to hold on them when they were cold. But we brought them, and these frozen straps still held a pretty solid uh, shooting rest. So, happy with that, one shot kill. I just can't believe this scenery, guys. I hope you enjoy these films. The amount of work that goes into them, both just hunting and then the the filming that Braden does and Logan and Matt and BMAC and Casey, everybody who helps put all these videos together. And then just the work of sleeping up here. Braden's been with me on Colorado and this one. They're not always fun, guys. It's cold up here, but this is how I like to hunt. This, Whether it's a 4x2 or a little 5x6 bull, I tell you, I still get so excited. And I honestly believe it has to do with how much work we're putting in. The more work I put in, the more fun and rewarding the hunt seems to be for me. So I hope you guys enjoy the films. Um, we're far from over, but thank you guys for watching this far. I know these films are long, but uh, like I said, we don't want to cut anything out of this experience. We want you guys to feel like you're up here with us and you're hanging out. So let's go retrieve the elk. Hopefully it doesn't snow on us all day because we're going to be cutting it up and getting out of here, guys. I'm so happy. <sighs> This has been a killer trip, guys. Killer trip, a deer and an elk. I've never done that before on the same trip, so. Dirty work is done. We needed both men to uh, maneuver that thing on this steep ridge. It's snowy, slippery, started here. I don't wanna show too much of the blood. YouTube doesn't like that. And it ended up <laughs> like 20 yards lower. So we're gonna try our best to take the entire elk. So the quarters, 
scraps. We got the the best tenderloins. Like we pulled them out so good, took our time. Giant tenderloins and uh, back straps. And then the quarters, I don't know if I said quarters. And then the head, we skull capped the antlers. I didn't want to pack out the head. No need for extra weight on this one. So we're gonna take the meat all the way down and uh, then we have to go get our camp. So there's still a lot to do, but I wanna give you guys an update. Still enjoying it. It's been snowing on us this whole time very lightly, but the wind finally has stopped and it's actually a perfect day. <laughs> You're fresh, bro. I am actually, you're tough. Tough kid, this kid's only 19, man. How would it be? It's heavy. I'm double your age. I know, dude. And then Go some. Here. Yes, well, guys, like I said earlier, this is the way I like to do it. You gotta suffer. It's more rewarding. I like to make it tough. And uh, these general season hunts, I think they'll always be my favorite. I don't know, maybe one day I'll get older, less capable physically, and I'll just want to hunt private land or maybe some of these CWMUs or... I don't know, somewhere where you can kind of hunt from the truck. But until then, as long as my body's capable, I'm doing this kind of stuff. I love it. Hope you guys like tagging along. butts kicked but we're just about to the spine and I think it'll be smoother than anywhere else. <laughs> this is like the coolest day dude I love the snow. I love the snow only to hunt. Just to clarify that guys I hate the cold. This is the only reason I'll go in the cold is to do this stuff. And I do love it. That was worse than we thought. And it was not all downhill, by the way. But well, we made it. Made it to the truck, guys. It feels good. We're gonna unload this. This meat is so cold. It's sitting on ice all morning. And uh, we're gonna sit here, rest up for a second, hydrate, get some food, and then buzz up as fast as we can to get our camp. We're not gonna film anything. Just. We'll go get the camp. You guys know what it's like, but another good push. And, uh, yeah, glad we're, glad we're at the truck, man. That was crazy. <laughs> Woo-wee. My back. <laughs> Let's go get camp, man. Let's get out of here. Hey, hey. Good morning guys. We got ourselves some good rest, but we're ready to get on the road and get out of here early. So we tore down the uh, Team Lodge trailer, our base camp, and we got just about everything packed up. Let me show you the cooler of meat we got. Everything's uh, set up. We got the beds put up on the sidewalls. And this is the real treasure of the trip. A Yeti full of, look how frosted. Everything is iced, trimmed, cold, not trimmed, but cold. We've got a full deer and a full elk in here in the Yeti. You can see, can't close because we got the bone end still. But this is going straight to the butcher on the way home. And then yeah, we got the uh, the beds put up in the team lodge, guys. This, this really was the ultimate base camp. I would assume by now that we've given this away, so if you guys are interested in the Team Lodge, go check them out on their website. Uh, hopefully we can do another giveaway with them again. But that's it from Idaho. We came, we conquered, we worked our butts off. I don't know how many calories and miles we put on the boots. 
over just the last five or six days but it was tough but that's the most rewarding hunts like i said earlier in the film so i hope you guys enjoyed it please leave a comment if you did make sure you check out all our merch at gethushin.com this holiday season or this new year i don't know when this video is going up we sure enjoyed it guys uh thank you so much for the support we'll see you on the next hunt